Jimmy Page is by far one of the greatest, most innovative and influential guitar players that's ever lived. And with his vast catalog of Zeppelin records and all the touring he's done, you can probably imagine how many guitars he has. Anyways, this is every time Jimmy Page showed off his guitar collection. If you enjoy the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more great videos just like this one. During the, the sort of 30s, you had the um, country, uh, country blues players who were basically street musicians and minstrels. Well, they wanted to get louder, so instead of using the round hole guitars, and they, they had these guitars, which is at the National, and this has got metal resonators in it. It's a metal guitar. And there we go. I suppose it's the early days of heavy metal, wasn't it? <laughs> I was noticing the machines, the tuners, yeah. are Grovers. Right. The sealed Grovers, which would have probably not been the originals. No. What do you recall? No, when, when I acquired this from, from Joe Walsh, who insisted that I bought it, and he was right, <laughs> um, it had been refinished. And possibly one of the reasons why I wanted to sell it was the fact that maybe it didn't feel the same to him when he got it back. Um, and my feeling is that, because um, this is a little hazy, this is a long while ago, but for the sheer fact that these holes haven't been filled in, I've got a feeling that I would have changed the uh, machine heads that were the production ones to the Grover, which I was more familiar with from my um, Les Paul Custom. They're more sensitive and, uh, boy, they've held up from all those days back then anyway, so there we go, it says it all. So, uh, essentially for tuning issues, just to... Purely for that, yeah, because, you know, a three-piece like Led Zeppelin, you couldn't have a, a slipping machine head or something. Well, you can't like be fiddling around too much. Yeah. Um, the other thing I noticed immediately in, in uh, looking at this was the push-pull knob. Right. Which, it's, um, that one. Yeah. So is that... Something that you've had done? And well, I, I, I customised um, my number two Les Paul, which again is, it, it, you know, is, is a real old vintage one too. However, uh, that gave any combination of all of these. But it's a little fussy because all of these were push pulls and have switches here and everything. But the reality of it was the thing that I found most important to me was the fact that you could reverse the phase on these. Mm -hmm. By reversing the phase, you get the. Uh, you get um, a close approximation to the sort of sound that Peter Green would get. Oh, yeah. And also uh, certainly BB King. Yeah. Now, whether some of these things came out um, with the pickups wide out of phase, um, you know, accidentally, I don't know. But I've got it on purpose, so there we go. Do you use it for specific oh, like sounds or oh, songs? Yeah, oh, yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I used it quite a, quite a bit. So this is on recordings and things, yeah. So, that so is it's just as simple as that. You just pull it out, and there it is. You've got it reverse, pop it back in, and you, you get the full, full whack of it again. Mm. And this guitar has also got a very, very slim neck, mm. and I think people probably speculate as to whether it came that way or you've had it done. Is that something that you had? I didn't. Down? I, 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 I didn't have it done. This guitar has sort of been. It's one of those guitars that really was meant to come my way. Um, because, as I say, Joe Walsh insisted that I bought it, and he was right. It came as it was. The only, only change that I made to it was, was that, really, in essence, the, the tuning okay. heads. But it already came with this, with, um, this scallop neck. But I've got to slim. say that I inherited a guitar from Jeff Beck, which was the Yardbirds guitar, um, which was another brand, I might add. Mm. But the, rea the thing of that is that that was another one that came to me, and that had a very shallow neck as well. So yeah. it's as though these, you know, somehow this came to me that way as well. So it always was. I mean, even way back in the days when uh, uh, Eric, for instance, was playing one, it was always known as like a really user-friendly guitar, the Les Paul. And, uh, and the, it, you know, the slim neck probably suits your style nicely then, eh? Well, I played around the fact that it was what it was, so that's it. I mean, you know. Mm. Very interesting. So this guitar is essentially irreplaceable to you. Oh, absolutely. This is... Uh, I mean, you know, you could say that about any guitars, but as far as I, I go, it's absolutely that's the irreplaceable. One. It's so that's unique. The, that's the one that gets... It's, in... you know, it's, it's my mistress, it's my wife. 
Mm. And the great thing is it doesn't beat you up for alimony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's not leaving you, so there you go. <laughs> oh, great well, stuff. it's not leaving me, no. No. Well, we're going to be very proud to, to make as accurate a duplication. But it's going to have... It's, it's going to be having some sons and daughters. <laughs> no one in paternity, neither. <laughs> <laughs> This is the guitar that goes through from the Yardbirds to the first album of Led Zeppelin. I love this guitar. And this guitar was given to me by Jeff Beck during the time that he was in the Yardbirds. Then we come to the amplifier, which interacted really well with, with this Telecaster and the whole of that first album is done with this guitar, this amplifier, one wah pedal, and the other one. Joe Walsh came along, he had a Les Paul, and he said, well, use it, just play it. I said, what, in the show tonight? He said, yeah, yeah, in the show tonight. <laughs> and it was just a real dream to be playing on this guitar. I never looked back from that point, really. It's brought me a lot of luck. I think the Marshall was always known to interact so well with the Les Paul standard. When I was a studio musician, one of the violinists gave me his bow to try it out, and I thought, well, that's really, really interesting. Then we come to the theremin. I used it on the middle part of Whole Lot of Love, where it's this big sort of uh, avant-garde section. Why the double neck? On stairway, I'd employed an acoustic guitar at the beginning of it and then two separate tr electric 12 strings in on each channel. And then I thought, how am I going to approach this number? It needed to have all these voices of the 12 string and the 6 string. sort of working tool in the band, but it also became really iconic. Making your grandmother nervous. You can't find I think the guitar chose me. I managed to make my passion, my hobby, and my hobby to my... Um, like it as such, like all the other guitars who are in that exhibition. I've loaned my Harmony guitar, which was a Harmony six-string acoustic, and it looks very similar to most acoustics that there were. It just happens to be a Harmony as opposed to a Gibson or a Martin. Um, and that, that guitar I, I, I had way back in the early 60s, and it, it, it was with me all the way through to the point that I used it as a writing tool. When I was in the Yardbirds, I wrote songs on it, because the thing is, it's not the sort of thing where you would go home and set up a, a huge amplification system just to play a few riffs. To explore the guitar and the writing process, I would do it on the acoustic most of the time. That's not all the time, but most of the time. And that, that particular guitar is the it, it, it is a vehicle whereby the first album of Led Zeppelin is written, the second album is written, the third album is written, and the fourth album is written. And uh, it's the guitar that actually culminates on playing uh, Stairway to Heaven. After that, after that album and the intervention of the double neck was a new thing. I actually then bought a Martin guitar at that point, but that was after the fourth album in time for the fifth album, really.
Um, what do you have over here? This is a this is a Telecaster. Is this the one with the? Uh, well, that's the, that's the, the string bender. Yeah. That this is. Uh, this is something that was developed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, look, the, the the thing is, this, this was developed by um, Gene Parsons and uh, Clarence White, mm -hmm. and Clarence White was a guitarist that, that that I heard with the birds on the birds untitled LP. Although he'd been on others like Sweetheart the Radio, etc. And uh, it, it was pretty amazing what he was doing. I know that. And um, well, I met I met Gene Parsons at. Um, Oh, I think it was in Houston somewhere, and I spoke to him about the string bender, and he actually made this well, this this one up, this body, um, and uh, and sent it to me. Now the original ones they looked like I don't know what you call it plywood over you know the sort of wood that's in <laughs> sections like that. That's how they built the mechanism in the early ones. They just made bodies and sold them. Uh, but but this one's got like a, a plate on the oh, wow. uh, and actually this was sort of piracy. This is like a pirate version because they sold the patent to uh, C well to, to, to Fenders, yeah. and then Fenders were taken over by CBS and, and and of course they didn't use it. They didn't use the idea. So and during that point, you know, uh, Fenders was still with CBS, and that's when they made this up for me. Well, he did anyway. Now what does what is the advantage of having this metal uh, piece on the back? What does it do to the sound? Well, uh, it doesn't really need to be there, actually, but uh, it's... <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> until you hear the thing, you know, it's... Uh, what it does, what it does, you see, you've got... Let me explain what it does first. Oh. Apparently, there's so many people that are involved in this whole, like Sneaky Pete, the steel guitar player, uh, had sort of donated one of his little bits from his pedal steel guitar to get it all together as well. <laughs> but uh, what it does, if you if you play a note... And you, and, and you just sort of, well, it's like that, you just put sort of, <laughs> if you're holding it, anyway. Yeah. And it's from the neck. Um, well, from, it, uh, sorry, from, 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 the, from, from the strap. And the, <laughs> and it just takes it up a turn. And the whole thing is running right down the back here. System of sort of rods and levers and oh, gremlins. And, and, and it, it runs to this, which just pulls the string back a turn. In fact, you can make it semi-turn. So or, it only or three semi-turns or whatever. One string down here? Or? Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, if there was more, I wouldn't be able to do it. You know, it's too complicated. <laughs> 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 That's why. But uh, the, the, the whole, I mean, I, I, I've stuck with it for a bit. The, the, the whole problem really was to try and make it instinct, to know the, to know the thing, because to begin with, I used to sort of play lots of horrible wrong notes with it, you know. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, uh, no, I, I really like this one. It's, it's great. This is a Yamaha FG403MS, yeah, but the registration which is sort of branded inside it is uh, QJY187489 and it's a guitar that, um, that I bought on my travels uh, before but actually on this uh, Southeast Asian trip in 2012. I bought it here and here I am in Pattaya at the moment. And I'm donating it to the Jesters to, uh, and let's hope that you get get some good, good healthy bids on this, and uh, it goes to help those kids. Is that the tip of the iceberg, or was that all you needed? Well, I was going to say there was a backup guitar for everything, but there's not quite in case you broke a string, you know. But uh, that, that that was the that was it. So if we're going from We'll go from right to left. So we've got, we've got the guitar on the right, the double neck, which is going to do, that's going to do rain song, song remains the same, at least. Then, then the one over to the left of that is the string bender, that's going to do 10 years gone. Then you've got the Dan Electro, which is going to do uh, Kashmir in my time of dying. Then you've got the, the, the Les Paul, which is, Basically, during the main the main set between the three Les Pauls, the one the red one in the middle is another string mender. Sort of, it's got some mechanics in it, like that brown Telecaster. 
Um, and then you've got the acoustics as a backup in case there's a broken string. So, so they, they were all sort of there really because of tunings on guitars and to, so that you could make the set relatively seamless without having to sort of tune up and just have a change of guitar. So it looks, it looks impressive, but they were all used. The thing, hearing guitarists when I was a kid and just really appreciating even then that, you know, it's six strings and it's an electric guitar, but everyone's whole take on it and their character is totally different. You know, and that's mm -hmm. what's so cool about it.